Well, it just came back on because it's it was too loud. But it's very hot here. It's about I'm in Ojai and it's about a hundred degrees. I was renting an Airbnb and the Airbnb um, <clears throat> the it's a trailer basically. It's an old it's a converted trailer. It looks pretty. Posh, You're getting back to your uh, roots from, on the outside. Yeah, oh. but it's um, the water stopped working, and then and then the air conditioning stopped working in it. It was uh, yesterday. It was a hundred degrees outside and one hundred and four degrees inside. And I felt like that's too hot for me. Speaking of sweat lodge, so you you so you can't take it. You can't take, yeah. Well, I mean, I think if you treat it like a spiritual journey, always you're probably fine. Mm -hmm. And and include your kids in that. You know, just say this is part of an initiation. Yeah, uh, I did. This yeah, immense they said we don't discomfort. Want, they said we don't want to be here with you. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not sure how to read into that. Yeah, but you know, I have to say, when they're older, and they've kind of looked back on that situation, they'll still feel like they didn't want to be there. You know, yeah. likely. Yeah, they'll they'll describe it as one of the features of their abusive childhood that they dealt with. You know what's interesting about that on a serious level? I do think trauma defines us. You know, I do. I think it defines us. So. I, I feel like parents just just quit it already. Quit trying to make your life per, the life of your kids perfect. It's going to suck, and that's going to define them. Yes, I would argue, however, that um, steering away from tra trauma is a good parenting. So you're like, saying don't, don't steer, don't steer, default. don't steer into trauma. Right. There are steer, some levels of this. trauma that are going to be unavoidable. But there are childhoods that happen that are not full of trauma. And I think that that is something to shoot for as a goal, you know? Well, well, this is, <laughs> I mean, I, I have to say I agree. And I think the one thing with pain, a lot of people have like, you know, whose life is worse contests, you know? Don't bother mm -hmm. with that. There's a lot of pain. Pain's low hanging fruit. I agree with you. You don't have to look for it. It's, it's. It's plentiful and it's around every corner. And I, I would guess, yes, don't steer in, steer away. Did you like the way I was doing that? The, when, I steer, when I steer away from trauma, I'm doing this. When I steer your, into trauma- Your steering just, wheel has a, a strange gripping mechanism because it's a, cr a cross on, one hand is, both palms are facing the same. So you grip with, on the inside with your, Right hand. I, I do. I do. When I'm steering, I. I hey, remind I, me, where did you go to mime school? <laughs> yeah, we spent like months on steering. It was a lot. It was a long time <laughs> we spent on steering. And I was so excited to use it. By the way, um, speaking of, I feel like I'm winning the backdrop contest. And I and I will oh, say. Oh, yeah, you are. That's the ocean, isn't well, it? Yeah, I will say that um, the first thing one wants to do in a Zoom to establish dominance is win the backdrop contest. I felt uh -huh. actually that in the green I was room, winning when I, when I was in a sweat lodge. I agree. I thought you had game. I thought you had game when you were in the sweat lodge, and I was impressed for a second. And then the whole hand thing on it. Look at that. That, that was week three. We did hand-cranked windows in mine. At mine school? Um, yeah, uh, people sometimes mistake it for churning butter. Not the same. Yeah. Hand cranked windows. By the way, I thought I thought Charlie in the green room was killing the backdrop contest. Charlie, yeah, is there was. any way you could just throw that backdrop? Yep. Is that on the live chat? I just think yeah. that's a great, great. I don't know what it is about that. It's. It's interesting, Charlie, because as nice as my backdrop is, that is, that is. Impressive. What is that backdrop called? Two beards? It's two beards. It's, one, a, it's full of beards. Trophy, I think. Yeah. Yeah. It's, um, <clears throat> it's so, just damn, it. it's just damn impressive. I'm sorry. Mish, I, yeah, I don't, I didn't, I, that didn't, that one didn't work for me. The, I wanted to, um, ask you a question, Darius. Um, <clears throat> I thought Bring that maybe you and I could re could reflect on um, some things that are personally relevant to one another. Um, 
like it's I, it, it is kind of interesting. You and I grew up. We went to for those of you who are watching and they're like, why are there these two late middle aged white men on my on my computer screen right now? And it was actually four of us just now. Um, but I uh, the reason that Darius is here is that Darius and I have known each other um, since we were 12 years old. And we we were going to school in Greenfield, Massachusetts, which which was a rundown mill town on rural Western Massachusetts. Um, neither of us come from families or backgrounds that have anything to do with the film or television industry. And we both, uh, we've stayed dearest friends ever since we were 12 years old. Um, in, you know, which for me, it feels like a very generous act on, on my part. Um, and, and then, we went by different routes. Wait, um, we both came is the generous to act. Be, is the generous act the act of friendship or the act of maintaining the friendship? Both. You think it, you think it was generous all along? Because I feel like I feel like the first move was generosity on my part. You remember how charitable it was? You recall, and then <laughs> uh, and then you know I do feel like. I hit that stage in adulthood where it became, I, I think I needed you. I mean, if I, I'll be so bold. Mm -hmm. And then it, and then it flipped again, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> the pendulum sorry, has sorry. been swinging, sw <laughs> swinging all along. Are you saying like, when I was like, please, 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 I'll do anything. Will you take me to the Oscars with you? And you're like, oh, yeah, whoa, 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 whoa. Don't jump to the chase. Don't jump to the chase. That's yeah. That's a whole thing. The Oscars, yeah. I, here's what I promise. By okay. the end of this, by the end of this conversation, we'll get to the Oscars. Okay. We'll, okay. we'll, we'll, we'll work. We'll you want to, you want to build up to that. I think it's fair. I think it's a, a wonderful place to land. Although I also uh, would, it, would it invite Charlie at any point to show that background. I don't think you have to wait on that. There you go, Charlie. I don't think you have to wait on that. Um, but, but yeah, I think as a narrative niche, let's wait on the Oscars and, and we'll, we'll wait on the degree to which you needed that. And you called for me and well, I, if I this was like, uh, for you, if this was a, a modern, uh, screenplay. I think we could say we, what we did just there was a little time jump. Like we just teased forward. Now the audience knows it's coming. They're anticipating it. Uh, and there, there's, it's maybe building a little bit of tension or excitement. On the other hand, we may have just taken all the air out of the balloon. And when we get there, everybody already knows and they don't care anymore. It's hard it's, to it's say whether kind of a, teasing that end was a good or bad thing. I, it's called a medius race, starting at the end, putting the end yeah. at the beginning. And I would say that there has to be something about that end that you don't understand, right? So like, right. yeah, we say Oscars, you think you get it. You right. think you understand? It's it has to be more than that. It has to be. Uh, well, now I'm surprise. curious. What what was it more than? Yeah. Okay. Well, I think what okay, we should well, do is talk for a while so I can think of something. Okay. Great. Okay. So um, <clears throat> here's a here's a question that just came to me. Um, this yeah. is not premeditated, but um, I think I, I have occasionally reflected on this question. How, to what extent, like we have been, you and I have been very close throughout our lives and have influenced one another throughout our lives. And I wonder to what extent our friendship shaped uh, the path of our creative career. To what extent did we, were we uh, somehow either, you know, either through support or competition, or just to spite one another? Like, were we moving forward on this path? And I, I think it was a, I think it was a factor all along. You know, I think that we, like, we both moved to LA in uh, ninety nine. The in the in December of ninety eight. Oh, right before New true. Year's. Yeah. Oh, and yeah. we moved into the same little, your aunt's friend's um, little house on the Venice canals. And your, you, your wife was pregnant uh, with your first child at that point. And, and my wife and I 
didn't know it. Um, and oh, yeah. we were like, why are they being, why are they, why are they sleeping all day? What's wrong with them? And oh, there was a, um, there was a gas leak also in the, in the house. So we were all sleeping all day. That's, that's true. Uh, that is true. Um, but we both, you know, we both came out to LA to seek our fortunes at the same time. And then we went on very different, um, paths along the way. What are your thoughts? Do you think that there, I, I, I mean, I remember, um, I remember like a healthy competition between us, maybe an unhealthy competition between us. I also remember um, at some point, this is just from my perspective. I remember at some point just switching into a gear with you. I, there was a time when we were younger where I think you're like, I, I don't know if I would have genuinely celebrated your successes, but there was a time um, before you started making the movie Loot that was your like first really big successful project. Um, in the process of making that, I remember just feeling like overwhelmed with uh, support and joy for you. Like I just wanted you to, to see this creative vision through and nothing would have made me happier than it to be successful. And that was like a little, that was a maturation point in our relationship. I think that was almost 20 years ago 16 years ago something like that it was, it was a long that time that would ago. have that would have been like two yeah 2007 you know what Mish? actually i just remembered this um i flew i went to i flew and shot some footage for that film in austria and I flew back from Austria to the East Coast via LA and I didn't get off out of the airport, but you came and met me in the airport. I, I wouldn't have remembered this if you hadn't have brought, brought it up. You came and met me in the airport and you were the first person I showed footage to. Do you remember that? No, I have no recollection of that. You, you met me in the airport. It's Was something that, a that field you'll scene? always remember. It's something you'll always remember. Um, it, it, it really it left an indelible mark in your psyche. It was the are you sure it was are you sure it was me? I think it was, although I do have a lot of other friends that might have met me yeah. now that I think of it. So I feel like imbued in your I think what you're asking is in this question is how successful Darius would you have been had I not been your friend? And I think that's a really <laughs> great question. I guess I don't know if I would be more successful. I think I probably would have just been more, <laughs> more successful sooner. Because <laughs> there's a lot of support that I put toward you I, instead of like forging my own, you know what I mean? Yeah, I right. mean a lot of hand holding, coddling. Um, well, yeah, I, no, I just think probably like, we were a little back. like we were a little like Bill and Hillary, which is to say, you know, you know, you said to me early on, "It's my turn," and you need to support me. And then, um, you know, you did all of that stuff, and then it was my turn, and I got. I mean, the Bill and Hillary thing's tricky because she did get beaten. Um, yeah. Well, it's still, it's still a reasonable analogy. Um, yeah, really awesome. I think I think that I think Misha, you can't possibly separate our trajectories in life from our friendship. I don't I don't think I would be even remotely the same person had we not been friends. And um, boy, Charlie, that's a wonderful backdrop right there. That is a good one. You know what? If you want to talk about a testament of friendship, look at that shot. You know, look who's in the foreground there. Like, had I <laughs> had I been a different kind of friend, I would have sat you on the other side. It's not. It's not the way I roll. Now, does that mean when the cameras came along that I didn't want to just like boom, just duck you under the table? <laughs> it occurred to me. But um, again, we won't talk about the Oscars yet. Um, no, no, actually, in in you know what's amazing? You know what's amazing, Misha? And I just thought about this really, really recently. Um, in eighth grade, we had this big class play. And the class play 
of course, you know, is called The Foreigner. It's a wonderful, um, a wonderful uh, a play. And, and we both auditioned for it. And as fate would have it, you ended up in the lead role of that play. And you truly, with all sincerity, did just an incredible job. Like it was one of those magical, I think you would agree, like just one of those magical um, school plays that just kind of, you know, was incredibly memorable. I still remember it in, you know, just sitting there and enjoying it and watching you kind of at, at your best in this, like, and I remember then feeling really, proud of you like I rem I actually remember sitting and watching you act and feeling like this is what this guy is here to do because you were you were on stage and it was so undeniable you know your charisma your sense of yourself on the stage you remember that wasn't that just like a transformative moment but the interesting thing is before before we comment on that the interesting thing is I ended up making a film I bet you didn't remember that. You ended up making a film in in eighth grade. Yes. Was it stop? Mo was that the stop motion? Was that stop motion? Yeah. 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 I do remember. Yeah. That's funny. Isn't that how weird? interesting? Yeah. So, so really, even... it's the Greenfield Center School that set us on our path. Yes. How interesting. I mean that that's kind of a crazy. Uh, microcosm of where we ended up going in life. In eighth grade, you ended up, we had these two, this little binary, <clears throat> and I ended up directing this little film, which is true, and you ended up on stage. And I do mm. feel like, you know, yeah, we were always competitive. Um, and there were times as all relationship in all relationships where that can be like where competition can kind of merge and veer into actual like especially when we were teens you know um well literal wrestling literal wrestling right. fighting like, actually trying to hurt each other correct yeah. and uh but it but i do feel like we got we hit a point in our Oh, what do you think it was? I guess it was around when you were saying it, we got very supportive of each other. And then I think from that point uh, around loot and you did visit me in the airport and I did show you that footage before I showed anyone any footage for that movie. Um, and I remember how excited I was to show it to you, which is a testament to, to, to who we are as friends. Um, I feel like we've been, we've had a pretty, you know, clear channel of support for each other all along. And I will say that had it not been for your support all those years making Sound of Metal, I don't know if I could have made it. I mean, that's how important it was because those were hard years, long, you know, I mean, 10 years of, you know, faith in a, in a process that had no proof of concept. So, you know, it, 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 I needed that support and, and you were there many, 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 many times over. So I really hate to be sincere with you. I, I feel like it feels wrong, but that's the truth. Um, that path of having faith in a long, arduous, unlikely journey, but just sticking with it nonetheless, is something that you've always been really amazing at. Like not veering. I mean, Loot, Loot was another example of that. For those of you who haven't seen Loot, look it up, find it. It's a really transcendent documentary feature that a lot of um, critics didn't like because they thought it was scripted. They were like, this, 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 is, all, this is staged and not a, not a frame of it was staged. You were just there with the camera capturing moments. Um, there, were, there were moments of synchronicity that didn't even make it into that film that, were, that would have made it even more unbelievable. Um, but that, the process of making that movie was one of just surrender and faith. You just had to keep the faith going and your faith faltered many times. 
I do remember that. And I remember being like, you remember, you believe in yourself. <laughs> um, well, isn't that the essence of faith? If it doesn't falter, you probably can't exercise it. Like faith is the, are those moments when it collapses and you keep going anyway. And, um, right. you know, like we've had to have a lot of faith in our friendship. <laughs> I'll say. Oof. Blind Oof. faith. Well, Mish, you're, you're, I, I have to say, I mean, I appreciate that. And I do think that does mark my creative trajectory for sure. I mean, I, I, I have a high penchant for the unknown. I have a, I have a tolerance of the unknown that's, that, that is maybe higher than some. Um, I'm willing to step out. Your path has been anything but obvious, which is also true. You know, I mean, I remember the days when, you were leveraging everything you could that you possibly could to the to the littlest detail to keep auditioning and mm -hmm. you had you had nothing left and i think maybe in a way it's because you and i both came from so little like i don't think we were that afraid to have little um i don't think we were like afraid to scrape the bottom and keep scraping the bottom and scraping the bottom a little more, you know? Yeah. I mean, I think I, I have had an interesting relationship with that scarcity dynamic because on the one hand, what you're saying is absolutely true. And I've always in my heart of hearts known that I'm going to be okay with nothing. I would be okay living in a tent if I needed to. And, um, and that knowledge gives, a, it, it provides a pretty big safety net because you don't have to, you don't, you never walk around feeling like I need this money. I'm, I'm, I know I'm going to be okay. At the same time, coming from poverty, I think that the allure of money has been maybe more powerful than it would have been for me otherwise. You know, if I had come uh, from, if I had always had money, I might not have um, been so drawn into making money when that opportunity finally came in my life. Um, and I may have made choices that didn't, uh, that weren't so quite so driven by, by making money, if that makes sense. I think I'm like, as I'm getting older, I'm, I'm able to formulate these so thoughts and recalibrate to an extent. But there was a time when I was like making money just for the sake of making money when it wasn't really about anything creative or, or bigger than that. And um, and I think that that was a little bit also related to having come from poverty. That's interesting. I don't think you've ever really voiced that to me, that scarcity model that you had <laughs> working that way. Yeah, that makes sense, actually, because, you know, and I think people know this about you, but it was a level of poverty that was frightening. It wasn't like it wasn't like we were kind of poor or you were somewhere on the middle class spectrum. You were in a serious, serious landscape of poverty. Like, I wonder if I'll have a shelter tonight. I wonder if I'll have food tonight. And that's, that doesn't go away. That's actual trauma, you know? So that makes, that makes a lot of sense to me. So you're, I think what you're saying is you were navigating in the creative landscape, you've had to navigate that as well. Like you've had to, you've had to kind of balance, can I do this? or will it all collapse? And where does that live in me? The fear of it being, of if it really collapsing. It's interesting. That makes sense. Yeah, yeah. whereas I, I don't think I come from exactly that same place. I think that even though I grew up poor, I don't think it's the same. I don't think I grew up as on the precipice as you did. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I, I just don't, I don't know how that we, we were super poor, but I don't have that same kind of trauma as you do around it. You know, it's funny there, look from, from, from the vantage point of childhood, you to me looked just a wash in money. Like your family was <laughs> fucking loaded. Um, and I remember your dad would, you know, once every three months or something, we would all go out to Panda East, which is basically like the cheapest Chinese restaurant in town. But to me, it was like, can you believe that we're just going out and ordering whatever we want at this restaurant? Like it seemed so opulent to me. I know. It's really, I know. really amazing.
Well, you did come into my life at when we were doing a little bit better. And even then we weren't, we didn't have a lot of money, but like going out to Chinese was still a special occasion. I, when we were young going to Chinese, we would, <laughs> do you, do you know what a poo poo platter is? Yes. A poo poo platter is like this cheap one dish thing that has two of each thing. And it was all we ordered. And I've since talked to my father about it and he would have like an egg roll. You know, uh -huh. it was like that. And we went once a year and we uh -huh. would get a poo poo platter. You know, it was uh -huh. ridiculous. But, you know, as four, a kid, by the was, way, for for a family of seven. That's right. I mean, it was it was right. ridiculous. But by the time I met you, we weren't that poor. We were when we were young, though. I mean, when I was young, I was we were super poor. But I don't think it was the same. I think that there was I think both of my parents had family. We had it wasn't the same set kind of uh, real precariousness that you had. And, and cause you were out there, you were like out there in the world, taking care of your brother for days on end by yourself. It's just a level of, it was not, it was, it was, it was really something else. And, you know, I think we actually, you and I, I think we actually started taking care of each other as friends from day one. Don't you think so? Mm -hmm. Yeah, like, interesting. We did. I, I, I hadn't. I mean, we both know that, that about one another. Like, we know that we're care. We've discussed the fact that we are caretaker personalities, um, in our apropos of our other relationships in life. But I don't think we've ever really talked about that r regarding our own friendship. That's interesting. It's I think it's true. true. It's true. I mean, I, I hadn't yeah. really formed that in my mind either, but it's actually true, and. You know, I think that you. I remember were... driving up to. I uh, driving up to. I remember driving up to Putney, like right after I got my driver's license. I was sixteen and a half or seventeen, and driving up at you know on a school night up to Vermont three in the morning. just to check three o'clock in the morning just to check on you because I knew you were kind of on the edge at that point. I mean, you could you could have easily not survived high school. And and the That's and true. a couple years after that, you were really on the edge, and it's true. Uh, and I remember being like you. You would go for days without sleeping. You were just you were a psychological mess at that point. And I do remember going up there and worrying about you and checking on you. And <clears throat> <laughs> no, you did. And you were. And, and likewise, like you, you know, from eighth grade on, I remember you used to pack a second lunch for me. Like I you did. packed extra food for me and brought it to school. <laughs> I actually did. I, we, I would pack Misha lunch. It would be my lunch and then Misha's <laughs> lunch. And we would go and eat it together before lunch. Yeah. And you would work on my homework. You would work on my, right. on my math homework and <laughs> I would feed you. This is actually true. Um, and, it, and I think it never has stopped. You know, I don't know about you, but I have found that I haven't needed you less as I've gotten older. I've, I have actually, yeah. I've needed you more, which is leading us to the Oscar uh, thing. On, on. Yeah. That was, a, you, did you get there? Did you get to the Oscars? Well, or is this what just I'm another doing, here's, here's, here's what, yeah. This is, I don't know what you call this. If the first one's a medius race, you know, mm -hmm. it, and, and that means starting at the, the beginning is at the end. What is it when you hit it right in the middle? You tease it again. You suggest, you're like, don't forget, there's an ending you don't understand. It's coming. Mm -hmm. I think that usually exists. Sometimes it doesn't if it's a really strong engine. In our case, I think it wasn't so strong. So I needed it to just- It was petering out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just, I just like, <laughs> and yeah. Yep, this is, definitely get, this is definitely leading us there. Now this is a, is a very interesting backdrop, Charlie. This is interesting. Charlie, uh, is your yeah. head is your head obscuring a naked body right now? Head is obscuring. Uh, I don't think I don't think can so. Can you move your Can you move your head to one side or the other? Which, which way? Th th this way? Yeah, that that that's my naked body right there. I don't see. I don't see. It, it looks like. Isn't it great because it looks like a black and white photo until you see the the skin tones there. It, it is well. I mean, I guess you could say it's great. It's great. It's 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 it's, it's, it's a lot. It's a lot. <laughs> But I love you know, that. I think I. I, I love I think, that. I think Charlie's background of you is one in a tuxedo at the Oscars, 
and his photo that he has of me is naked in a burn in <laughs> in, in a wildfire burn zone. <laughs> I think I set a tone for what might happen if you mess with me on social, on the socials, right? You just, after that, you were like, okay, I get it. You don't want to get a war with me. I, Wait, I, what are you talking will, about? Well, because I posted that after you posted the picture of me oh, in Hollywood. that's right. Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah. So that was a, that was a response. And that was a, that was again, a show of dominance. <laughs> um, well, I suppose. <laughs> I think so. I think it was. And, you know, but what I was saying is I, I don't need you less. I find I need you more as I get older, uh, which is interesting. And, you know, apparently men, you know, men have such a hard time with intimacy traditionally that men apparently have a real hard time as they get older because their friendships fall away. And, 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 you know, I was talking to my son about this and that, you know, so many men end up, you know, kind of getting more and more lonely as they get older. And um, I, you know, that, I just think that's really interesting because I think in the case of us, we were you asking are, your friend, were you asking your son to be your friend? He keeps saying no. He keeps saying like, back off dad. And I think that's, I think what he means by that is yes, I do want to be your friend. I th I'll take care of you when you're old. I think that's what, that's what the message there is. By the way, you referred to us, this is interesting, Misha. You referred to us earlier as being middle-aged. Are we still there? Or are we late? Are we older oh. than middle-aged? I mean, I, I have to say it occurred to me when you were talking because there's going to come a point and it's not terribly <clears throat> not long from now where our claims at middle age are going to be thin at best. I don't even know. Actually, I haven't even ever looked it up. What, what is middle aged? I mean, can we're in someone, the middle can, still, aren't we? Can somebody can Google someone, that and tell us yeah. what, what, what middle age is? Have we peaked? Somebody is asking. Are we no, are um, we are we peak middle age right now? Oh, tell me it's okay. forty to sixty. Tell me if it's someone no, just said not someone up, on here doesn't go up to sixty. I if it's forty, it's to, 60, 40 to sixty, forty to sixty. Middle age is not. In, it's fifty five. Someone says fifty five. I think we're fine. I'm going to call it middle age. Could I say this? I if, if if either of us still have abs. We're middle aged still. How about that? Abs, abs. Uh, either, right? If either of us still have abs, then <laughs> both of us right. are under the umbrella of middle age. That's going to be have, my. I I have um, West and Mason and I were lying in bed, and West was lifting. I was reading the bedtime stories, and I guess I had no shirt on, and West lifted up his shirt, and he was like, "Look, Dad." And he's flexing his muscles. He's like, I have a six pack. And Mason looked over at me without any kind of judgment. And she said, dad, you have a one pack. You know, a keg. Yeah. <laughs> well, my son and I do um, planks together. Um, like I know I've done do them. It. I've done them with you. Once. Oh, with me and Asa. That's right. Oh, yeah, yeah. And he's a beast. He puts like a backpack on with weights in it now. And um, oh it's- Oh my God, it's really? Yeah. How, how it's long- great to you, see the- how long, how long does he go for now? Do you both go, can you go for 10 minutes? What do you, how long do you go? He and I go for about six to seven minutes, um, somewhere in that realm. That's very impressive. Yeah, but he's got weights <clears throat> on now. So he's more impressive than I am. But it's wonderful to see the youngsters thriving. My <laughs> father, my father came to the gym with me a couple of years ago. He was seventy-six at the time, and we did a plank, and he did a plank for five minutes. Isn't that amazing? Oh my you know, god! You know, Richard, that's crazy. Like, I don't know. That's pure will because you can't do a plank usually if you haven't. Practiced. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. It's, um, I guess it skips a generation, right? That's what they say about that. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> you know, my explains. grandfather, my grandfather used to run marathons and um, 
he w- he said to me, he was like, Dari, it's the way he talked. He said, Dari, I don't understand why everyone celebrates the people who finish in two hours when it takes me six or seven hours. That's hard. That's what he would say. <laughs> I mean, he had a point. <laughs> Dare, let's talk about the Oscars. Okay. 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 Well, oh boy. I can tell you this. Oh. Somebody asked me, are you going to the Oscars with Darius? And I said, no, of course not. There's, this is the most restricted Oscars in history. Um, virtually no one, not even A-list movie stars are invited to the Oscars to fill the seats. The, because of COVID, they're just the only people that are allowed to go are the people that are nominated for... You, Darius wouldn't have been invited to the Oscars if, right? Is this true? If, if your movie, if, if, you were, if your movie had been just nominated, you probably would have been invited. But technically, if your movie no. Had, been no. had been nominated for an Oscar... And you were not nominated for the other things because you were nominated for six in six categories or your movie was. But if your movie had been nominated for best film, you would not have been invited to the Oscars because only correct. the producers would have been invited. It's, it was that restricted. Anyway, somebody asked me, are you going to the Oscars? And I said, of course not. That's right. That's my little teaser. That's my teaser for, for you. That's my, uh, I, my teeing up the big finale. Well, of course not, because uh, surely Darius has a date. Like, surely, surely, all right, put it this way. Surely Darius has a date. And if he doesn't have a date, wouldn't he use this opportunity to get a date, right? Because if Darius can't find someone to date him, wouldn't this have, of all things, have helped? Well, let's put that over here for a second. Okay, that's just going to live on its own right here. And again, this part of mime class, this got vague because you can see there's some vagaries here. It's like, I think that that little subplot lives in an igloo. It's in the Arctic, Um, a little door. Um, Yeah, so here's the thing about the Oscars. Um, You know, I haven't really talked about this at all. but the Oscars, the Oscars coincided with a really, as you know, Misha, coincided with a really crazy time for me because my, um, my, I have a very sick child. And um, so around the time of the Oscars, leading up to the Oscars was maybe one of the darkest, most difficult times of my life I would say definitively and you know I've had some dark times (laughs) so um so and the reason I mention it actually and I kind of thought about this as we talked about the arc of our little meeting here but the reason I mention it is because um I think so often we look at success, we look at glamour, we look at people on red carpets or wearing Dior. I was wearing Dior. So were you, by the way. Um, no, I wasn't. We, Dior, Dior yeah, you were. want me to wear their stuff. Oh, that's that makes sense. Um, so the, you know, so often we look at these things and it looks like one thing, you know, and we never know the subplot that lives behind it. We never know what's what's happening beyond the image of perfectness or happiness or success and all the rest. Now, the Oscars, of course- I think that that's something that's exacerbated in this particular moment in our society with social media too, because everyone is always showcasing the best, the brightest, the smiliest, the most perfect version of their lives and their families. But of course- No, exactly. You you were going through I, the juxtaposition of that particular moment in your life, and you're still going through the, the hard, hard chapter, um, you know, like a, a, a parent suffering through a sick child and what your child is going through is just so, it's so hard and it's so heartbreaking. And to have that moment that you've been working toward your whole life, you just reached the apex 
of your career. You, you, you may never again be at the Oscars and, and, and anyone who ever thinks that they're going to wind up at the Oscars is delusional. It just doesn't happen, right? And yet you found yourself there at this incredibly triumphant I, and incredibly I, I, unlikely moment. I did always know. I and did yet okay, at the go. same time, at the same time, you you were suffering through the like the most exhausting and most emotionally draining thing imaginable, and um, it, it was almost like a kind of cruel joke from the universe. It seemed, you know, it was it was the cruelest dichotomy, and I think what was important for me at that time as I was like. I was navigating a lot. I was navigating press and the Oscars and directing something else at the time and running back and forth to the hospital and sleeping on a hospital cot and doing all of this stuff that I needed someone, I needed something near me that I understood, you know, I needed someone near me that I, uh, it, that I felt grounding right then. And, um, and that that was actually the truth of it. It's like, yeah, I, you know, that you were the person on the on the face of the earth that I I uh, could call on in that at that moment, and um, and I needed it. And uh, so, because you don't look as good as other people, I might have you know invited, but you do have qualities that no one else has. <laughs> it's okay that I throw that in there, right? Just <laughs> this. <one. laughs> well, no, there. That's, that's just. I, that's I, just it true. It was such a. It was. A, it was a. I. I. Uh, there was nowhere on the planet I would have rather have been than celebrating that moment with you. And. Um, I am grateful to have been walking the planet with you for the last 30 plus years. And I look forward to another 40 to 60 years of this. Of middle-aged them. Yep. Yep. Middle as, and late as, middle and late, late, late age. As long um, as one of us, parenthetically me, maintains abs. Correct. <laughs> Um, uh, that really, this entire Zoom has been an opportunity for us to talk about your Oscars and your abs. I've realized how this has been co-opted. Well played, Darius. Well played. Well, well I mean, I My think that off. they, well, I, I, I do, I have talked a lot about establishing dominance. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> and I think that, I think, I think that you and I, really truly have to check our friendship at any point if we're not doing that. I couldn't agree with you more. I couldn't agree right? with you more, my little friend. But, my little and I will friend, say little friend. I will say going forward, Mish, if you ever end up at the Oscars, oh that's cool. No, I'm just that's fine. I'll grab I'm gonna grab let me do this. That's cool. I got people waiting for me too. I'll be right there. <laughs> Coming. I got shit. I have so much shit going on, man. So much shit to do. But yeah, man, if you ever end up at the Oscars or anywhere like that, some big fancy thing, I'll definitely be there to support you too. Great. And even if that's, you know, on the other side of the, of the rope, just cheering it on, you know? No, with you. Right there. Right there with you. Hey, Mish, I'm glad Love you're you on there. this earth. I love, I love you. Love what you're doing. And by the way, I will always, always support Ginchwas. <laughs> <laughs> because I believe in, I believe in the game of, of sorts that you're doing. I believe that we need like trivia games and worldwide, like a board game, is it? Um, so Ginchwas, right. Ginchwas yeah. forever. And um, I'm always, always standing by and always paying attention. <laughs> bye, bye, Derek. Love wow, you. Give love you. Wow, my love to your whole family there. Bye. I will. Bye, Charlie. Bye, Charlie.
Bye, and guys. Thank you so much. Oh, look. Oh, wait. Uh, we, we're we're going to deliver a little challenge, everybody. You guys can go. I, you're very important. You both have phone calls to get. Uh, oh, a challenge. I will. The challenge. Um, yeah. Which I'm for, going for to. Me and, for me and Darius or for other people? Char Charlie, it's, what picture is that behind you? But I don't. I don't remember. I don't know which one I'm using. <laughs> Sorry. Um, so, uh, so we've got uh, this item number eight video. Bye, Bye, Bye guys. Um, Bye, Charlie. Over the years. Bye. Uh, yeah. Well. So uh, over the years, uh, Misha's friend Darius and he they uh, managed to get into a lot of trouble together. Create a video of you with your oldest friend detailing a time when you got into some fun trouble for good together. That is your, I, if there's a takeaway from this panel, that's, I guess that's, that's it. I mean, there's been a lot of trouble over the years, I, I would say, um, but maybe fun trouble and maybe good in there somewhere too. Who knows? I don't even know what just happened. This is all like a fever dream. I'm just here to put up the challenge and, uh, you know, you can follow Darius on uh, his social channels and whatnot for more of this um, comedy and shenanigans. And don't forget, tomorrow, noon, thunderstorm. Coming, coming soon. All right. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Um, I'm going to go now. I'm going to go and try to process what I've just witnessed. Um, is there anything else? I don't think so. Okay, have a good one. Bye.